to meet state governors, to discuss with them, to implore them, isn't it? You know, and even beg them for God's sake, come and utilize these funds. There are some states, maybe about about four that have get into about four, four to five billion naira lying in Ubeck without being accessed. Uh, Sixteen states are yet to access their own 2015 allocation. Only two states have accessed their 2016 allocation. You raised the issue of 41 billion naira idling at the Central Bank of Nigeria, but um, it's looking at it from the flip side now uh, isn't the condition for accessing this fund a little impossible considering the fact that uh, the, the states might not be even buoyant enough and um, that might just be a little too severe for the state to access this fund can the process be modified no uh, if you look at it you are you are right in the sense that uh, there are idle funds but not necessarily there are funds that had already been allocated to states they are not funds that are dumped into any pool and so on and so forth. Each state has got its own allocation. And UBE keeps record of every transaction on, on, on these particular accounts. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, the 50%, the logic, as I said to you earlier, of trying to insist on the 50% counterpart funding is to, uh, is to generate or to develop a broad base, you know, a broad funding base for basic education. Don't forget how that sector suffered, isn't it, you know, initially isn't it, in the past years. And without that commitment, I think it's to extract a commitment from the states that look here, this is a collective responsibility that we must all discharge. Of course, you are right. The argument had been put even by the governors that let's reduce the matching grant maybe from 50 percent to 20 percent to 10 percent it's feasible they, you know you know we can go ahead and change the law isn't it but at the same time what it means and what it translates into is the reduction of the funds that are available to support this crucial sector that we are talking about uh, secondly uh, i've also argued several times that i'm not even very sure that whether that lack of access is because the resources are not there or because we are in some economic difficulties. If you look at the record of those states that have not access, you come to find that a lot of them are resource-rich states. Are resource-rich states. They are not necessarily poor states from, from, from other, you know, you know, many of them, isn't it, you know, uh, you know have derivation funds, isn't it, you know, because, you know, they have their foil, isn't it, you know. And a lot of them, actually could not access for a fairly long period of time due to one problem or the other. So, yes, as a nation, we need to look at it, isn't it, you know, that if funds are there idle, we need to find how do we deploy these funds to ensure that we build the necessary infrastructure, we train the teacher that we need to train, isn't it, and make sure that, isn't it, you know, we are funding the base effectively. It defies every sense of logic that a fund such as that magnitude of 41 billionaire would be lying idle and the states would be unwilling to access these funds. And that raises the question of uh, the federal government's sincerity to provide these funds to the states. Is the government really, is the federal government really sincere? The federal, is, the federal government is very sincere in this, in, this, in, this, in, this, in this particular endeavor. And I think the majority of states for example, now, the earliest states that have been able to access their 2016 were Borno State that is in a state of insurgency because they really desperately needed the funds, and Nasarawa State. You know. And I think uh, you know, the number of states, a lot of those states that have not accessed, for example, their, their 2015, and maybe some that have not accessed their 2015, including in 2014, including Ondo, Ogun, and others, isn't it, you know, uh, you know, have, have made a real effort to see that, yes, they are interested, isn't it, you know, in coming out to see that they pay the counterpart funding. And one of the key, key elements that we see, the key element we see is uh, the law is very clear on that. If you don't account for the previous allocation, you cannot get the next allocation. If the states can't account for the money collected from UBEC, so where does this place the UBEC's monitoring 
mechanism. Because what many people are saying is that UBEC is conniving at the state level to ensure that the uh, the siphon these funds. So, does UBEC conduct monitoring exercise? How often does do, do they go on this exercise to ensure that this, these funds are well utilized for the appropriate uh, uh, budget, budgeted expenditure? Well, don't forget that we live in a federation. States are autonomous institutions. The federal government is another tier, isn't it? Well, it's only my tier, it's another, it's another it's, you know, it's the overarching, isn't it, uh, entity. The issue is that UBEC undertakes very serious monitoring. We monitor each and every training that is done. We have the quarterly uh, financial monitoring exercise. And it is these quarterly financial exercises that have brought out a lot of issues. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, ultimately we write, isn't it, you know, to the state uh, universal education boards, isn't it, you know, basic education boards, to look at those issues, isn't it, and rectify them. We also go for project monitoring. If you come as a state government, isn't it, you know, and put across your own action plan, you know, each and every component that you said, I'm going to build this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Within the year, UBEC ensures that it goes around to monitor the progress on each and every project. So I think as far as this aspect is concerned, it, and it is based on that, that some of these lapses in it, you know, could be recognized isn't it, you know, and could be pointed out to the states. But at the end of the period, at the end of the year, when the final accounting is done, and that's where the issues, isn't it, you know, really, isn't it, come up and have effect on the state's ability to ensure that it accesses, you know, some of these funds, isn't it, that, that are there.